Welcome to the Veterans Council Veterans Podcast. Our podcast is called Veterans Suicide, the Local Solution, because we believe that veteran suicide is a national problem with a local solution. That local solution is us, the community. And I'm really excited about having this program we're having today because we're going to sit there and introduce to you some of the people of the local community doing something about veteran suicide. I want to first of all introduce, we have two uh, organizations that we're going to introduce. We're going to have uh, Florida for Warriors that was founded by Tamara Sugar and her sister, Terry, and she'll have a couple of her tribe coming on at, uh, as, as we go through the podcast. One through is Matt. How are you doing, Matt? And that's one of the tribes. We also have yeah, uh, guests. Um, Belisha Adams. Belisha Adams is the founder of Paint 22, and she's doing so as well for for, um, for veteran suicide. And of course, every time I have a, I have a podcast, I gotta have some of my tribe to back me up. So part of my tribe hey. of this event is gonna be John Gigante. What's going on, John? How you doing? And we got Caleb Scott. What's going on, Scott? What is going on? <laughs> hey guys, pray for me. I got a bunch of Marines and and just one army guy. So so pray for me. So what I want to first. <laughs> First of all, I want to get up here is I want to you talk about the gray ends, Tony. Yeah, I know it's the gray ends. Can you see? <laughs> I have some. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm still trying to get over the Marine guy with the with the suit thing, suit jacket. I don't understand that piece, but <laughs> I was like, are you <laughs> selling the house? Like, what's going on right now? <laughs> I was gonna say, is he selling cars over there? What's the suit? <laughs> they look like it. Yeah, it's um, a boot. So, uh, so I <laughs> First in the queue is one, I want to sit there and I want to introduce Tamara, Tamara Sugar. And Tamara and I go back a long ways, and she is definitely um, really got the spirit of what I, I believe when it, when it comes to uh, being a, a, a nonprofit that's run by veterans. We're about being collective and, and including everybody, not being individuals. In fact, this is a short story when Tamara had her, couple, her, her uh, hikes a couple weeks, a couple years ago. And I said, hey, you know, I'll try one. I was, I was out of shape, whatever. So I just told myself, I'm just going to do one mile. Okay, one mile, and that's it. And I went and told all the guys there, I said to you, I said to them, if you see anybody past mile three, it's an illusion, okay? It ain't me. But when I got there, I was so hyped to all that veteran camaraderie. Uh, you know, I made the whole event. And that's what <laughs> I have. When you have that, that us there, and it was a bunch of Marines and stuff like that, and, our, and our, a couple of Army guys. But when you have that kind of camaraderie, man, it, it just stimulates you. I just can't explain. And so I was very excited to be helping out with Tamara. We've been we've been close ever since then. So I, I just want to introduce Tamara for that. And Tamara, please tell tell the uh, the listeners uh, about Florida Warrior and what's going on. With you Hi guys. guys. Um, unfortunately, our other board member um, and co-founder that was trying to get on, Terry Lynn, hasn't been able to get on yet. Um, somebody needs to go into the chat and get the error message, Tony, <laughs> that she's got. No, no, no. Um, but um, we are Florida Foyers, and we founded this organization a few years ago. Um, we were working nationally with another organization that was kind of the, the, the start of all these silky hikes and the mentality of getting veterans together, using humor and the camaraderie. And as we started working with them on a national level, we realized that there was a need to do more localized, um, that there was a lot of veteran organizations, a lot of people that were like-minded, like hearts, both civilians and veterans, and that we needed to do something here to bring all the organizations and all the veterans and all the civilians that wanted to help together. And we got together with the other um, board members, AJ Hutchinson, Matthew Leonard, who I believe is on now, um, yeah. Jennifer. And we said, you know what? Let's, let's start Florida Forwards. Let's start something localized that we can do a lot more, yeah. that we can really focus not only on these sites, but other events and working with other nonprofits and adding more resources as we go. And it started, we started on our own about three and a half years ago. And it, it's just, it's been a, a labor of love, but it's been amazing to watch it grow. Um, we do the Silky Hikes is our big events that we do in every city, every major city in the state of Florida, we do Silky Rucks. Um, and those are all about, like you were saying, bringing these veterans together, giving them a place to laugh and joke and yes, have some drinks, um, but it's more than that. It's about pushing them to do those 14 miles to carry that weight in honor of those that have been lost. It's about them having a place. You'll find with veterans that they will not take that mask. If you ask them if they're okay, they're going to say they're okay. Because for a veteran, it is a lot easier to answer, yes, I'm okay, than to try to explain to you why they're not. So they automatically say they're okay. But when they get in this atmosphere of the rucks or the happy hours or the golfing or even camping, when they get around each other, they don't wear a mask. They just let themselves be 
vulnerable. Um, you're all, I can see all the smiles from the veterans in the group because that's, they know that they're able to actually talk to each other. And the long-term effect of that is they have a closed group where they can talk. They have a closed group where they can ask questions. They can make jokes. They think they're funny, but they're not. Um, <laughs> they can ask each other for advice. But the biggest thing is then we have all the other nonprofits that are all part of this family that we've created. We've got you know, like Veterans Counseling Veterans. We've got resources now that we can connect them with where one may not be able to do it, but a tribe sure as heck can do it. We may not be able to stop veteran suicide, but we're gonna make a difference, period. And I think we have. So that's kind of how it all started and where we're going and what we're doing. So, and this, and then I see you got Matt. I'm kind of, I'm trying to read with Matt. I'm, I get so nervous, you know, Matt, what, first of all, what branch are you? Oh, I'm Marine Corps. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. I'm really afraid to read his read his shirt. What, Matt, what's what's your shirt? What does it say? What's your, it says me know? sarcastic? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, Tamara, go ahead and introduce Matt for us. Okay, wow. Well. <laughs> okay, do I do the clean version or the real version? <laughs> <laughs> real. Always real. So Matt came into our lives um why we were still growing who we are. Um Matt is the joker of the bunch. He is the crazy one of the bunch. Um, but Matt is also the one that if you need anything, Matt will be there. Um, what makes Matt an outstanding board member for us is Matt has also been one of the guys that has been there. Matt has been there struggling. Matt has been there where he's had to reach out and utilize the group for help. And even if Matt doesn't mind me saying it, even getting him to bait lines, um, mm -hmm. being in crisis, needing that help, even messing up. Matt's been on all the, uh, he's been on all the levels of everything that a veteran needs help with. And he's come out the other end. And every time he comes out, he comes out stronger, a stronger board member, a stronger leader, and a stronger part of this organization, because he is the person that can say, no, 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 don't even try to BS me because I've been there. And I know what you're, I know what you're lying about. Now let's get real and let me help you. So that is Matthew Leonard. He's one of our executive, executive board member. And he is the outreach director for um, Naples, Venice, Northport, so Minnesota, that area. that whole area. Okay, and let's yeah. say, you know, so, so you know, even though I'm kind of nervous to turn the mic over to a Marine, uh, <laughs> Matt, tell us, tell us what, what did you find the value in, in being part of uh, Tamara and I, your board member of a uh, fourth way? What, what, what motivated you to be part of this group? Um, well, like Tamara said, we met a long, long time ago back during uh, when she was with another group. Um, and we just hit it off instantly as friends. Um, just our, our, uh, you know, our like-mindedness um, and everything else that goes on. Um, but the main reason that I wanted to become part, you know, of Florida for Wars, and, you know, we all sat down, talked about it and came up with the idea of it. And then it got the ball rolling, you know, it took some time. But the reason why I wanted to become a board member was because I want to help vets. Um, like Tamara uh, specified, I've been in the situations that a lot of veterans are in, are going through, have come out the other side. Um, you know, it, nobody's perfect in this world, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I just, I want to help people. I give the shirt off my back for anybody. You know, yeah, that, and that's, you know, I think a lot of us are like that, man. We, you know, uh, we just, you know, we always about the collectiveness and taking care of each other, and, uh, and you know, and sometimes, we're guilty because we, you know, we're we're first to take care of somebody else before we take care of our, our own needs. And and you being an example, what, what, what was your rank? Uh, I got out as a E five sergeant. Okay, Roger that. And uh, so, and I'm glad to have you on board. And hopefully, we can, you know, we we could be uh, brothers after we finish out this thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though I'm army guy, and thank yes, you for being, being you know, and we have some more questions to you as well as we go on. That's that's yeah, kind of like the guy at like the hikes. He's like the heart, like he'll go and you could tell like he's there full hearted and putting himself in it. Yes. Great. And I, I do want, we got a couple of guys here and like I said, the Marines who have actually been part of this and we're going to, they're, they're going to time in a little bit more once we get a chance to go, go around the horn and we just talk about why we're here and it's just sort of looking, looking great. So thanks, Matt, for, your, for what you've done. And I'll tell you another thing, well, I know a story about Tamara as well. Not too long ago, we were supposed to be, Veterans Council Veterans was going to have a uh, military sexual trauma conference. And Tamara just jumped in. She's busy, you know, she's always busy, right? Always busy. Mm -hmm. I'm busy, busy. Nah, I'm not busy. Yeah. <laughs> and she finally come on. And you know what? She, had, she came and she started making things happen, okay? There are a lot of nonprofits out there that are real big, national, all this kind of stuff there. 
But that's not the, that's not how you measure a, a nonprofit to me. A nonprofit to me is somebody who sits there and help anybody else out. No matter who's at home, it's just like us when doing a, we're on a we're on a rock a rock, rock march or a run, and somebody falls back. What do we do? We turn the dang formation around. We mm-hmm. piss off. We mm-hmm. piss off. Now. We got a lot of piss off people, but we make Damn sure it, that. Damn it, Carl. That, <laughs> I know. <laughs> that would be why Matt is always the rear flank because we don't turn anything around. AJ's always in the front, and Matt's always in the back because <laughs> Matt radios AJ and tells AJ to slow down. AJ gets behind whoever's falling behind and start. I mean, Matt gets behind him and starts kicking him in the rear end, telling him to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yep. and that's, that's great to have. We like we want to try to promote that thing that that kind of yeah, that kind of effort as well. So Tamara, we we unfortunately had to postpone that that um, yeah. But you know, she came through. She got a sponsor. She's got us food. I mean, it was just an uh, exciting thing to see. So we need we need to encourage more. One reason why I'm having this podcast is that I want to I want to sometimes we got to lead by example, and I want people who are watching this podcast to see what it looks like when you when two organizations work together. It doesn't have to be you by yourself, and that's that's one of the things I really want to highlight. Okay, I'm still trying to uh, I'm, I'm on the background trying to get uh, Terry in, but uh, until then. <laughs> No, surprise! Say you did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know, Terry Lynn Sugar Robinson is my older sister. Um, Terry Lynn and I were working with the National Group together, and and so we kind of came together to, to form Florida Warriors. Um, she likes being in the background. She doesn't mind being unless she's yelling at the guys to behave, which she's like a drill instructor. It's amazing. Um, yes. But unless she's doing that, she likes to kind of be in the background. And so Matt, and AJ's the other board member. He's the same way. And Jennifer, they like being in the background. And Matt and I are usually the ones that are pushed up front to do all the talking. Um, yes. But uh, I'm the, I'm the one running up and down the formation, telling people to hurry up or tighten <laughs> up or in the yeah. back pushing people. Well, let's let, let's hope we can convince her another time if, if I can't get this work through to bring them out. Because the people in the background, need, they need to be um, acknowledged too, um, and that's important as well. It is. So uh, as we as we sit there and, and dominate this thing, um, and I'll, we'll get to you, Belisha, pretty soon. I'm sorry. No, I'm not uh, taking time. <clears throat> I have coffee. John, <laughs> and you were part of the, you were part of the Silky match and the Silky March, and uh, we well, did one here too, right? You, did you do a Silky March with Tamara, or did you, or you did yeah, one? Yeah, I've done a, I've done like three. I've done three with Tamara, and I've done like. 10 total. I've done it in New York, Baltimore, Philly. And then in Florida, I did the Tampa. I did the Sarasota. And then I did the Tampa one again. And what was it, John, that you, that you liked about being part of these Silicon Mars with, with Tamara and, and the Florida Warriors? Uh, it's you relax. It's a time you're with your brothers or your sisters. You get to open up. You don't you're you. You don't have anything else except the hike. You start. You start early. Yeah, I have a uh, captain, and the orange soda was my thing. I even. Uh, mm-hmm. I had some. <laughs> the hikes. We don't drink at the hikes. What are you talking about, John? <laughs> I had some of it. It was pretty good. I mean, it's just orange soda. If anyone else asks. Yeah, but. exactly. <laughs> And the whole day, it's just camaraderie. You get to build that relationship, talk. You make friends. Yeah, it's yeah. You can't you cannot underestimate the quality of that, Caleb. Yeah. Uh, you, so you, you've been a couple of marches too, right? You have, I think you have been to Florida for Warriors. But we have to make sure we you know, when they finally lift this COVID nineteen thing out. So, uh, what did you like about going on those marches, Caleb? Uh, it's. I hate to piggyback and sound redundant what everybody else is saying right now. You get to be you. Um, we vets were, you know, we live in dark humor and perverse minds. It's how we operate. It's how we cope. It's how we deal with that stress and that depression period. So when you get to go do those things with your guys and all of them, they're acting the same exact way as, you know, as you are. It's, it's a magical feeling. It's a nice feeling. You get to be you. You get to have fun. And then you get to go home and finally get that stress off your back. And then you get to go do it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so I, I will come back to you guys again, but we, wanna, we don't want to feel, we want Belisha feel, she, you know, feel left out. So the, oh, another part. We have to get Caleb, we've got to get you involved in one of the camping trips. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Are you sure about that? Because I got a feeling a couple people might yell at me. <laughs> Well, what do you guys three days it? of silky hikes, so of the silky <laughs> hike mentality. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, you, hey, I'll tell you, now, now I, you know, I, I've been in the military, both as enlisted and officer, 
And I've been in a stogie margin, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, it, is, it, is, it is somewhere, I think I'm getting, I, I can see somebody taping and I'm on next, you know, I'm on, I'm on CNN, you know? Hey, <laughs> veterans council veteran? And is that guy next to him got his drawers down? <laughs> It, it does kind of remind me of the old Girls Gone Wild videos I used oh to be. I think we're a little worse than that. Yeah, and it's not, it's not old people worry about that. But anyway, uh, I just let you know, I think be forewarned, okay? Be forewarned. Uh, so now I want to I introduce Belisha. Belisha is um, also a military veteran. She founded um, the Paint 22. She's out here in Tampa now, right, uh, Belisha? Uh, yeah, we do about our radius from Pinellas. County. Okay. So, tell us about your organization. And tell us a little about you uh, as, as well. You always got to start up with you being in the military. If not, I'll have to, I'll have to delete you off the thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm right. well I'm got an exception. Amazing, an exception. But go ahead. Go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't as amazing as you guys. I did a short term, uh, you know, due to the don't, you know, I had complications in my military experience, okay. but. Uh, I'm here, you know, I love it. Um, you know, I support the community. Uh, my brothers are still serving. They got a, you know, about five years left of their term to retire. So, you know, definitely a big family. And I uh, came out to Florida about a couple years, well, two or three years ago. And I, I went to University of Tampa and trying to start a business. And what can we do? You know, art, uh, I'm more on the art side. So uh, how do we service the art community? Okay, you know, we're, we're, we're just brainstorming here at this point, you know. And um, Paint 22 came up, so that's how that's how we we thought of the idea of Paint 22, launching it through the University of Tampa's entrepreneurship program, um, and made it happen. So uh, it, that was the first year was just launching. Uh, the second year was last year. Uh, we pretty much doubled our funds coming in. This year's, of course, a little slow, so it was a little yeah, yeah time to <laughs> recoup, <laughs> you know, and uh, redo some things, but. Um, but yeah, we're ready. So our, our mission essentially is to same thing, you know, same thing you guys are doing, just building that camaraderie. We do it through art. So one paintbrush at a time, you know, where military families can just really enjoy a safe place to, you know, be creative and uh, discover local resources. So at one of our events, we would highlight, you know, somebody local like Florida for veterans or, you know, canine warriors or, you know, something that they can take home with them and, and, and look into. Um, and yeah, and then our vision of, of course, is just to provide that alternative light skill I mean, where they can um, use arts to serve as like, you know, just like self care, you know, take care of yourself, whether it is through hikes or working out, you know, we're, we just want to bring that alternative, uh, you know, through art. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, wow. Wow. I see a fundraiser in the future together. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, yeah. I saw that. pictures from. <laughs> I'll bring the beer. <laughs> Gotta bring the beer. Um, Felicia, did you have a gala last year? We did. We did the red tie I saw fundraiser. Pictures of it. Yeah, we did. We had. Uh, we did have uh, University of Tampa. So I figured, why not bring our one year anniversary, you know, back to the school? And you know, it was beautiful. They had um, artwork there from uh, Stanton Story Co Collection, and. All, artwork from all over the world, you know, all these military veterans coming in and just just hanging out, having a good time, and and looking, wow. good, you know, dancing, you know, how they get it get down. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty good time. Well, one thing, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the art. You know, um, do you ever get somebody like you know, that draws something really like uh, scary and then uh, like you know, like that's that guy's that guy's probably a, watch a out for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever seen them? Yes, yes. So I mean, I, you know, we we like to keep it a safe space. So definitely, we don't like to say anything at the you know at the time of the moment. We very very encouraging whenever we are in our classes, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we did do a activity for the uh, the, the Hillsborough Sheriff Veterans Pod, and wow, you know, the things that they created, this was like cartooning one-on-one, -on -one, like just to get them loose, you know, we're just making a cartoon, you know, and some of them were definitely a little dark, <laughs> you know, dark and scary. So, you know, and, and those are the people that we can really reach out to yeah. and, um, you know, just ask, you know, what, what do you need, you know? So we have those conversations with them, but we're really just that, that outlet where we can refer them out to somebody else. But yeah, there's, there's been some anybody, anybody here, like, uh, what kind of artist you think that Matthew is? What do you think he? What do you think he is? Say, I Matthew Wagner that. loves <laughs> art. I, I think we'd have to put an R rating or even a <laughs> double X R rating. What's At least like? triple, more than likely. <laughs> so, yeah. so we can't show him. We can, we we gotta care about showing Matt's art on Zoom unless we put we put down restricted of age or something. 
Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they got to sign a waiver of liability. Uh, yeah, well, my brother. Yeah, my brother. We have this uh, Paint Twenty Two artist group. So if you guys want to check it out, they Absolutely. have a whole bunch of people posting artwork. But my brother's also a Marine, so he'll he'll doodle in there sometimes, and it's like this little stick man like blowing somebody's head off. <laughs> I'm like, really? And then that'll get like the most likes. And I'm like, how did that happen? You know, all these amazing <laughs> artists and this guy. <laughs> The mentality, that's why. The mentality. Yeah, it is, it is. If I draw something, it's going to be a stick person with a big old head. Exactly. exactly. I mean, who, who's in the group and has seen some of the memes these guys posted? Can you oh, imagine yeah, if you yeah. let them lose I'm guilty draw? of that. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm looking at I'm looking at Caleb and I'm looking at John and, you know, they got these little nice little faces and stuff. But I wonder what, what you guys be drawing. I'm sorry. Do not let John fool you. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to recreate Criminal Ants, and I ended up getting halfway through and then eat the crayons, but no, that happens. So yeah, you made those see. pieces back there? Yeah, I was no, saying, no, I was no, there's no, a book. This is, um, if you ever check out Terminal Ants, it's all about, like, Marine Corps life and infantry. Yeah. Um, this is kind of one of the iconic, or at least what I think is iconic, and the saying behind it, I wouldn't say out loud, but it's it's not that well done. <laughs> I, got, I got a question. I got to look it up. I got yeah. a question from one of these, these guys out here in the Facebook and from Wayne Taylor. Uh, he's the, uh, the the military liaison for St. Pete, no, no, US, USF St. Pete. And he's asking, what would it take for Pay 22 to host a workshop or painting event at the Vet Center? Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, yes. Well. Yeah. I mean, we, we have so many ideas, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard just to penetrate those ideas. It's just a scary thought. Um, but we really wanted to do uh, VA art days. Um, so VA rep art days where the people that are waiting, you know, let's get mobile. Let's go to the people that really can't get the resources. That's going to be our VA coming out with their laptops, all that. And we can set up an art class. So people that are waiting to see the VA reps that can make it, you know, two or three reps. And just go for it, you know, one or two hours to handle claims, you know, dive into those deep questions that they, they don't want to take the bus for to go to the VA, you know, so um, wow. definitely I, I do want that in the works. But if we if we are doing something at the VA, um, we have four free, free classes a year. So it's one class a quarter. Uh, a lot of our classes are uh, becoming filled. Uh, so we're trying to transition now that we have to reschedule a lot of them uh, due to the pandemic or whatnot. We're trying to transition uh, online, but just call, contact us, and we'll we'll be able to. Yeah, you know, yeah, go, yeah. I'm not here. We have to put a uh, contact. Do you, have, do you have a Facebook page, uh, Alicia? Yes, pain22.com. Just send us a message, and we'll try to work something out for sure. Are you on Facebook or just .com? Everything. <laughs> uh, .com. It, well, we just started Instagram this year. I'm trying to get it, you know, <laughs> the social media thing. But uh, I'm but yeah, still trying to work it too. I gave up on Twitter. <laughs> I know they're like you need a Twitter. I'm like I really don't. I don't even no. know how. To... <laughs> yeah. And Tam, and do you have? And so you have a Facebook page called what is it called now? Uh, Tamara, is that a question yeah, for you? For, I'm for sorry. Alicia, what's your Facebook? Oh, for me. Page? Oh, it's it's just Paint Twenty Two. Um, you okay. might have to put the INC in uh, in order to to find it, but yeah. just Paint Twenty Two INC. Uh, same thing for Instagram. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Tamara and, and, and Matt, you can either tell us what your guys' address. How can you, how do we contact you? How do people find out where um, you are? On Facebook, it's Florida Four Warriors. Um, just keep in mind, it's the number four, not the word four. So it's Florida Four Warriors on Facebook. There is a public page. That public page is open for anybody. You just like it. You can follow what we're doing, the other partners we have in the community when we do events. And then we have a closed group page. The closed group page is for other nonprofits or other resources and for the veterans themselves. And that's a private page. It's completely confidential and nothing's supposed to be shared out of that group. And it's a place that they can just kind of extend what they do at the hikes and the events. They can be themselves, they can talk and they can be open. And then of course, for business partners, we have a, um, again, floridafourwarriors.com. Okay, that's, that's good to and know. We have Instagram, uh, Instagram is Florida Four Warriors as well. So, so, so if somebody wanted to join your group on Facebook, how would they do that? If they want to join the closed group, if they're a veteran and they want to go to the closed group page, just type in Florida Four Warriors and it'll pop up. You'll see both of them. One of them is actually says group. And so you know which one you want. It's going to ask you three questions. Please keep in mind, if you don't answer the questions, we're not going to add you. They're pretty mm -hmm. darn simple questions. Did you serve <laughs> in what branch and when did you serve and were you honorably discharged? That's all it's asking. And it's just a way to screen out to make sure that we don't get any of the uh, fake profiles or fake people coming in. 
Um, you know, if you're working on a fake profile because you're hiding or something, they're not going to get added. We, we want these guys to have a safe place to talk. We want to mm -hmm. extend what they're feeling at the hikes and stuff. But when a veteran's reaching out because they're in crisis and they need help, they need to be able to feel safe that no one's sharing it out, that a family member or a job or something's not going to see those posts. So we do want to make sure it is veterans going on that page um, yes. so that they can feel comfortable talking. I mean, it's a way, it's just an extension of how to keep that gun on safety. So we want to make sure it's safe for them. And again, that's Florida, the number four warriors. And when you go, when you search it. In yeah. Facebook. Okay. And look Florida, for the, the number four, one that asked the warriors. Question. Number four. Okay. Thank, uh, thank you. Um, and for you guys information on that. Um, now, what do you have? I know we had this COVID-19. What kind of changes have you made since we had this, you're going through all this self-isolation on <sighs> social distancing? Well, kind of the, we, we kind of were holding off on canceling anything until we knew for sure. And obviously the, the military sexual trauma conference with you was the first thing that fell the first, the first in a long line of things. We unfortunately had to cancel. We had three hikes planned between April, March, April, and May that got canceled. So that was kind of it was a hard hit. These guys are isolating. And so we're encouraging them to do small groups. You know, they want to do one or two people when they can still be safe and, and, and keep social distancing. Like we had a few of us that took a um, concealed weapons course on Sunday to, up in Gainesville. And we kind of just grilled out a little bit and we're able to see each other and still be safe. And so we're encouraging people to reach out, reach out on Facebook, reach out by phone, reach out by messenger, talk to each other. Um, we are getting ready to take advantage of Zoom, and we are going to figure out how to set up Zoom, if it's Zoom is the most practical way to go, but we want to set up chat rooms where there are video chat rooms where everybody can sign on like we are now, any time of day, and see who's on and talk to each other, and we'll start scheduling game nights. We're going to start scheduling disgruntled decks game nights, so the guys can get on and play games with each other and talk to each other and, and just have that that. Because we are, we are seeing a spike. We're seeing a spike in, in crisis calls and people struggling. We have two vets right now that we have search teams out for in South Florida because they are missing. Um, so we don't want to get to the point that these guys who already are dealing with isolation are dealing, now they're being told they have to isolate. So we want to make sure we do what we can. The biggest thing is, is trying to keep that social distancing by adding a lot of online, a lot of video things. Um, you know, we, any, any way we can help. Um, the other thing we've done since this all started is we are working with another group who very blessedly, we had a private person step up um, and there is a hundred rooms, 50 at two different hotels in Hillsborough County that is being offered up to, we've already got about two dozen homeless vets that have been taken off the streets and put in there. And the misconception that these are long-term homeless vets, these aren't. I know, I know for a fact, the one that just went in there two days ago is a vet that's under 30 was living in his car. So we blessedly were kind of refocusing from the events and focusing more on getting vets off the streets, vets getting mental health, doing what we need to protect the vets from, from this virus and any other things that may come up while we're being isolated. Well, I want to also mention that uh, a friend of mine, uh, one of my buds, uh, Larry Roberts, he's, he's really dedicated uh, American Legionnaire. He's a Legionnaire, American Legionnaire. Wanted me to make sure I remind you guys that every Monday they have a thing called Buddy Check. Mondays, and that's when we are, we have to do a buddy check on all our people. So we want to uh, we want to make sure you and uh, you know and we need to be doing that as well. You know what we have back in the day we had called like alert alert rosters, right? And you know it's coming to the CQ and the CQ would call somebody and blah blah blah. We need to really look at that of trying to find a way to stay in contact with veterans who may be uh, who may be isolated or whatever, and they need to make sure that we're out there. We're, we're watching what's going on. So I just wanted I want to make sure that I um. We bring that up as far as Buddy Check Mondays for, for um, from Larry's guys. Uh, now, I think the key is to offer something for everybody. Um, we have um, one of the Celebrate Recovery pastors um, that is still active duty out at SOCOM, um, and he's offered to do an online Bible study, step study course. So we're getting ready to put up that, that, that on the group page and see the response for that. And I think that's the biggest thing. I think all the nonprofits need to start thinking outside of the box and realizing that everybody doesn't fall in the same category of what may work for them. So we need to offer multiple services that we can to keep people from isolating mentally, at least. Remind me of thinking time, right? Cause you know, one of the, my podcasts gonna be, uh, is going to be faith-based leaders and su veteran suicide. So Maybe I can, you know, I don't know. I know he's still, if, he, if he's still active duty, he can only say so much, you know, he can, exactly. I'm sorry, I can only say so much. But uh, 
So, but anyway, but that's why that's something I think is important too. That we we're going to have a podcast about that. We're we're talking about how um, faith has a part in when it comes to suicide, veteran suicide. So I can remind myself on that. So, what are you doing, Belisha? Anything during this COVID nineteen? Uh, we're definitely pivoting. So um, you see, everybody's going online. Um, so we're gonna, you know, get on board. We got a couple art classes scheduled with local Dunedin artist uh, Mason. So she's been uh, hosting our classes, and uh, since typically with our funding it goes to art supplies to fund the the class, you know, we're gonna just use those funds to get and uh, and and feed and, and and provide back to the community by paying these local artists, you know, and because uh, they, they're probably, you know, they're definitely struggling um, just as much now that, you know, art isn't a uh, top of the priority for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but it is a great outlet. So if you guys want to try something new, uh, check it out. Uh, we'll be posting classes on there regularly. Um, and then we do have a photo shoot uh, coming up probably after the pandemic, just so everybody, you know, does feel comfortable with the, with the photographer. Um, but we're going to try the same thing, you know, just try alternative uh, ways to where people can express themselves, whether it is a family photo shoot or, you know, dog or, you know, baby or whatever the case is, we're going to try to extend the photography side of it, um, you know, on top of our regular art classes. So. Oh, that's awesome. I like the online. I need to get you in the group so you can let the guys know what's going on and when and where. Yes, that, I wrote it down. I was like, yeah, let me join the group. <laughs> I'll answer your questions. I understand. You don't have to answer <laughs> your questions. I'll just add you. You don't got to answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we know you're legit, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, did, did you just uh, buy a house or something? Or what, what's going on there? Oh, yeah, my personal life. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it is in the works with the pandemic. There, it's, there, it's new construction, so it's slowing down. Um, the original close date, you know, is March 27th. So we're just crossing our fingers, you know, hoping that we can hit the date and, you know, just take it day by day. So, but yeah, yeah it luck. is in the works. So, Thank you. Congratulations. I'm putting it out there because, you know, we were, we know where to go next time when we do our marches. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah, I did see. Uh, is it the Warriors? Um, they're right down in Ruskin, aren't they? My Warriors place. Yeah, my, my Warriors place. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Kelly, uh, Kelly and her guys. And hopefully I'll get a chance to have them on, on, on our podcast as well. Okay, so I've got, I'm, I've been talking enough and, you know, I'm an introvert. So, you know, when I, when I leave this place here, I'm going to sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, any of my tribe, anybody want to have any questions, comments, uh, uh, John or Caleb? You could, I think, like with the paint, Belisha, yeah. what, what do you recommend, like the best type of paint? Well, not the best type, but the most used type of like paint. Is it like paint therapy that... Okay, so yeah, we, we do shy away more. I mean, we have um, readily available counselors and art therapists that would assist us and provide those hours through um, James Haley. But our activity is mainly just to bring the families together, give everybody a safe place. It's typically a wood staining activity, so the men can be more involved. Um, and then, you know, and then we just kind of take it from there, you know, and, and have those personal interactions. What do they need? Uh, some people just want to come hang out, you know, they'll just have a couple of beers or what whatnot, but uh, we typically use wood staining, but on, on a regular basis, if you want to just pick it up, I mean, acry acrylic, you know, um, is usually a good start. Or uh, if you want to go real cheap, house paint, and then you just water it down, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but make sure you wow. clean it fresh. <laughs> so it's family oriented? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, bring the kids in, and usually they, they take the lead anyways, you know. <laughs> They'll paint all over your canvas. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. So, Tamara, I have a question for you. Um, <laughs> so, I'm the guy that you just, uh, the veteran that you just meet at the bar that brings you into the circle, and the circle gets a little bit bigger, and that's just how I do things. I'm not a nonprofit or a counselor in any aspect. Trust me. You don't want me to give advice to anybody. But I'm very curious about your organization and how it prevent suicide. So you were talking about earlier before this all started that you guys were on a watch. What is your guys' SOP one? I'm just very curious is all if you can. No, 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 that's fine. Um, when it comes to the internal workings of the organization, yes, we have, and, and Tony has been a blessing um, because he helped us. And I think John, you were at the one I was at. 
Um, we work a lot with getting um, continual training for our veterans that are in leadership. So any of the veterans that want to step up to be outreach coordinators, they, that want to like Matt and John's been through the course and, and, and Michael, we've got a bunch of our guys that have, we um, safe talk and uh, assist training, all the crisis intervention training we try to get. We had another amazing uh, business sponsor that was going to allow us to do another 15 guys to be trained, <clears throat> excuse me, to be trained. And unfortunately the virus hit. So as soon as we can, we'll get them trained. Um, we want these guys to not only have the passion like you do and know what to do, we want them to actually have the knowledge behind them about how to be the first response when something happens. So not only are we doing the events, but we're also training the leadership behind the scenes so that when we get the calls in the middle of the night, and that's what happens. I mean, Matt can tell you, John can tell you, you know, we, our phones are on. Our Facebook messenger is not closed. My phone stays here which is why I never sleep at night. Um, because if somebody posts on the page or somebody sends a message to the page or somebody sends a message to one of our guys, we are immediately there. We're calling them, we're checking on them, we're making sure we're assessing what level this threat is. Are they just needing to reach out? Are they just needing somebody to talk to? They just need a vent. Are they seriously in trouble? Do we need to get boots on the ground and get to their location? And we're obviously case scenarios are do we need to get leo involved do we need to have law enforcement there to unfortunately yes we have had two baker act veterans and you know we don't just drop them off and say okay there they are we follow up and matt will tell you because matt's a veteran that reached out that we did take to bay pines and then he was admitted and he got the care there and he got the care after and he got the counseling and we work with the other nonprofits once we know where a veteran's at i mean the initial interaction is getting them to events, getting them to let their guard down, let their mask down and to talk to each other and to form a bond with each other. And we tell everybody when they leave any event, whether it's a hike, whether it's all of us going to top golf, you should leave that event having new phone numbers, having new contacts. You should not be leaving that event to where you're standing next to the same person you came to. You should meet new people and have new people to the left and the right of you that you can lean on or that can lean on you by the same note. And from there, we, we post constantly with these guys, resources that are out there, other groups that can help, other things that they can do. But the main thing is, is being there the second that they need help. If they reach out and say that they're in crisis, whether it be just to make a post on the page, you know, F this, I'm done. Well, you make a post like that on our group page and you're gonna have about 20 leadership immediately jumping aboard. They're going to be, people are going to be messaging me saying, okay, do we need to get people there? Do we need to assess it? We've got leadership. Obviously, if a woman is reaching out that we know has dealt with military sexual trauma, and unfortunately Jennifer couldn't get on, we're not having Matt call her. She makes a post and we know she's in crisis or she messages us. We're going to have one of our female veterans outreach contact her. We're going to find out where she's at. Is it just a matter of needing people to talk to, needing people to reinforce that she's going to be okay and that she's got support do we need to get her to counseling the same thing happens with a man you know if, if, if john for example were to post something on the page right now saying you know my life is really spiraling and i feel like i can't do this anymore we're going to immediately people on the page are going to start talking to him your fellow brothers and sisters are going to start talking but leadership is always behind the scenes immediately we have a whole separate group page and they're immediately assessing what that threat is. Does somebody need to get to him? Does somebody need to get him in somewhere or does somebody just need to be with him? And we don't stop after the initial issue or the initial contact. It keeps going. That will always check. There's almost an accountability, accountability partner sponsorships, you know, your sponsor almost like you do with AA and Al Anon. Once a veteran we know needs that help and needs that support, he has people in the group that are his accountability partners and that are almost like his sponsors that are going to continue to look out for him and continue to call him and check in with him and make sure he's okay. You know, Matt, I hate to keep using you as an example, but because you're a board member and you're on here, I'm going to. Matt That's right fine. now is somebody that we check on on a regular basis, not because Matt isn't doing amazing, but because Matt has struggled. And right now, Matt is in an area down there in Venice where he is isolated from other vets. And so we want to make sure that at no point Matt is spiraling, you know, we want to get him out of the house when we can and where we can. And if he starts showing signs or he starts reaching out and saying he's not in a good place, 
we're going to get leadership, other people that he trusts, his battle buddies to him, or we're going to get in touch with someone like Tony and say, Tony, can you help me get him into a program? Or can you help me get him to somewhere, get him a counselor to talk to, or we're going to get him to the, to the hospital, whatever the case may be. But we, we try to not just have it be about the initial event, because that was the problem before with what we were doing with the other working groups. It was just that one day or just that one event. Okay, those are great. And the events are phenomenal. We love them. They, they work. You've all been to one and you know they work. But four months from now or four days from now or four weeks from now, if that gun comes back out, there better be a backup plan to continue to help that vet or it didn't matter what happened at the event. So we make sure that we have backup plans and that's why all these other nonprofits are so important. What you're doing with the painting may work for dozens of our vets in our group. As soon as I, Tony knows this, I'm always on. I find out about another nonprofit or another group and what they're doing. And if I think that's a resource that's going to help our guys, our guys are going to damn well know about that resource. And I'm going to follow up yeah. with that person and make sure we're doing something with them because we've got to make sure there's something that connects with every vet and not just for that day, but for the next lifetime. So that's kind of it so far. That's where we're at and how we're operating. We just keep training our leaders to keep going forward. Uh, I think, is that, is that Galileo that, 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 that you're, I just saw you with there, John. Um, yeah, I hear all the puppies in the background. I don't know if that's Matt or John. Let me, give me the microphone. <laughs> that's what Galileo was saying. Um, so, was that kind of what you meant, Caleb? Yeah, no, no. And I, uh, you, you answered all of my questions. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine the amount of logistics, the man hours for you guys to be so dedicated to do what you guys do, including the Paint 22. I'm just, I, I'm nowhere close to you guys. I've never even thought about a nonprofit. I'm thinking of something, but I don't know if it'll ever come to fruition. But I'm just, I'm, I'm very happy that there's people out there that exist like you. And uh, I'm very humbled by your guys' uh, organization. Well, thank you. It's, it's, thank you. it's a lot of people. Um, and I'm sure she feels the same way. It's a lot of people, um, but we need more. I mean, yeah. do we have That's active right. 30, 40 leaders? Yeah. Um, even just here in the state of Florida, even without not being nationally, I would like to have 150 leadership that will step up in different areas. So it's not just the same group trying to handle it all because it does, it is just as taxing for our leadership as it is for the vet you're helping. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm definitely looking for programs for leadership in particular, to be able to decompress themselves too. Because a lot leadership? of times leaders won't admit they need something. And, and then that's when they spiral. And that's, I think Matt, you can you can take that one to the and have the floor on that one. That's why Matt spiraled. He took on everybody else and never addressed when he was hurting. Nope, never did. I have a question. <laughs> uh, so is your leadership, um, are they all military or, or veterans or is it open to civilians? It's civilians in leadership. And, and we got, well, first I just want to joke with Matt. Don't elaborate mo more than that, Matt. We are circling back to you to elaborate more. Um, I didn't hear that part of it. Sorry, Nala's whining to go out. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we um, we definitely and we we've gotten some pushback about that, and and I, and then the veterans right now on here will tell you. A lot of times, people don't think any civilian should be involved, but you know what? If somebody's got the heart, I'm a civilian. You know, I lost a veteran to suicide. I come from a veteran and law enforcement family. My son's a marine. You know. It, it, it doesn't take a veteran to want to save another veteran's life, though, to save a veteran's life. You know, civilians have a lot of heart and a lot of passion for this mission just as much. And um, sometimes, you know, you've got to have that combination of both. And if a civilian comes to us, most of the time when civilians come to us, it's because they're somehow related. They're either married, they're a spouse, they're a brother, they're a sister, mother, father. Um, somehow they are connected to the military family. But when a civilian comes and says they want to serve and they want to be part of it, we welcome them with open arms because this village has to be a lot bigger for us to continue to save veterans' lives. And it is going to take both veterans and civilians to do it. Yeah. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, a, warning order, a warning order, Annie Moon just, just joined. So protect your wives and women. Annie, Annie Moon is in, the, is, in the, is in the house. Yeah. But um, another Marine. <laughs> So just, 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 giving you, just giving you guys full warning. Um, so yeah, and what I want to do as we, as we close this thing down, and um, 
It's just my my knowledge is that when we when we do um, police call, we get shoulder to shoulder and we go down that parade field. When you do that, you're going to find that cigarette butt. And too often, a lot of us are just trying to be the, do it all by ourselves, and you're just not going to find that cigarette butt by one person going through the field. So we need as many as possible on deck, on hand, or whatever as well. So let me as we start to close this, what I want to do is I want you to, this is a time for a good ask. So I want to go around and to ta Tamara and Belisha and say, what is your ask for the audience listening? What are we asking? <laughs> what is our ask? I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I understand the question. Like how to unite, yeah, we, yeah. how to unite like the veteran communities? Like what would you ask for oh, what, what everyone for to right take now? away from the meeting? Oh, take away, okay, yeah. I um, appreciate you, thank you, see? We see each other. <laughs> okay, so I mean, to take away from this, from page twenty-two, uh, you know, if you if you're looking for a different activity, something um, to really expand yourself, you don't need the skills. We walk you through the event. Uh, you know, it's it's something good if you want to try page twenty-two. Come out to one of our events, whether you're a volunteer or you're participating in the activity itself. See how it goes. I, I mean, I've had great success stories where people just take it home with them. You know, they never painted before a day in their life and they have Friday night paint nights now, you know? So, uh, you know, it's definitely something you want to try out with the family or, you know, even if it's just yourself, bring a buddy, you know, and, and go from there, man. Love it. All right, Tamara or, or Matt, which one, either one, one of you? Um, take away. Um, if you're a veteran, get involved. It doesn't have to be our group get involved um the best way that you can keep your sanity your mental health is to be involved um so get involved in your different veterans group get involved with the activities just because you may not need the support doesn't mean you may not be the perfect one to give someone else that support uh civilians we are always looking for volunteers we're always looking for help businesses we're always looking for business partners other nonprofits. um takeaway for us is we want to grow the network of all of us working together. We want to grow it to where other states are looking at Florida going, wow, look at the way all of those nonprofits are working together and all of the veterans and civilians are working together to make this mission happen and to improve our veterans' lives. So we are always looking for support and help. And all Thanks. Aspects. Thanks. And then add Matt before you we wind this down. Um, yeah, like pretty much exactly what Tamara said, don't be stubborn and ask for help. Um, it took me years to get out of my stubborn my stubborn self and i still don't you can ask tamra or anybody knows me um i'd rather help somebody than help myself um right the main thing is like exactly tamra hit the hit every hit the nail right on the head um need help get help don't be afraid to call your your buddy up no matter what time it is in the middle of the night you know post that you need help you know talk to somebody Okay, we're going to already close, and uh, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, Tamara, we couldn't get your sister Terry on. And I know Jennifer was uh, working the, the phone for someone else that's in uh, distress, and that's just what you know. That the one of the most key things about being successful, if you're going to prevent veteran suicide, is you got to be accessible. You have to be accessible. It's not a nine to five, Monday through Friday. It's normally after that. So, and that's why you're important. What you're doing, always got to be out there. We got to be out there accessible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have my last comments. If no one's uh, any any of my tribe guys have any comments before I before I do my my, my five minute. Uh, well, before you do that, I do want to say thank you to you, Tony. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Because I don't think a lot of people realize in the background. Um, like Tony said, it was amazing when we got to meet and we got to start working together. Um, but Tony's in the background, not just for veterans counseling veterans, but for all of the nonprofits in Florida. He's in the background, going and talking to the people that matter. He's shaking hands, he's kissing the babies, and he's getting things done for us so we can have more things like the Military Sexual Trauma Conference. We can have more things like the Women's Conference. You know, you're, you're making things happen. You're getting the training that these guys need to be leadership and to be crisis interventions. And, you know, people don't realize just how much in the background you are doing and how many places you were just in D.C., what, a couple months ago? Uh -huh. um, so we are, we are very appreciative to what you do both with um, VIVAS and with Veterans Counseling Veterans. Thank you. Yeah, I want to add on to that. I want to add on to that too, because even, as, even the small things that we're doing right now, like this, this, um, this meeting, you know, uh, I, I, even the small things, I definitely want to appreciate. Thank you for holding this meeting and, uh, you know, I see some new faces today. Um, 
I, I work from home. So when this pandemic happened, like, I'm like, who are you? You know, <laughs> where's the world? So I appreciate you for having me on here as well and, and, and joining and, and just getting everybody together and just share our stories. I appreciate you, man. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And I'm going to do my five minute and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll call it in. So everybody, um, just want to just uh, sound off. And one of the things I want, I want to have more of these. What you just witnessed today is all the organizations out there who are trying to do their best when it comes to veteran suicide and preventing veteran suicide. We can't do it all by ourselves. You cannot monopolize, you can't franchise, and you can't nationalize suicide. It is going to be that mom and pop store, that bodega, that's going to be the one that's going to sit there and stop that. And even Tamara mentioned about civilians. So we all need to be part of this fight. And I'm asking you guys to be part of that fight as well. And I, hopefully these uh, the ladies are on here and others who are form a coalition because we're stronger as a coalition than we are as an individual to stop our veterans from dying. And we're, and we're going to take that to the bank. What I want you guys to know next, the next couple of weeks that we're the Veterans Council of Veterans, we're going to start having some focus on the families. Uh, one of the biggest gaps we have with, with uh, services that there are a lot of services for military families, people on, the mil on active duty, but there's almost no services for families of veterans. And so I want to have a couple of the next couple of weeks we're going to be talking about and helping out uh, families of veterans uh, for this COVID-19 and that kind of stuff. So next week, we're going to have a, a, a couple of uh, panelists who are um, licensed health counselors and stuff and LMFTs and some families discuss what they're going through with this COVID-19 and how they can cope. And then the following week, we're going to do a special on special needs kids. Uh, there are, uh, the military has a big lot of programs for special needs, but now that we're in this pandemic, what's going on with special needs? When I say special needs, I'm talking about the autisms, uh, with, uh, Arsberger, um, ADHD, that kind of stuff. So we need to talk about what's going on there and provide help. So the next couple of weeks, we're going to focus on the family starting uh, May 14th. So uh, May 4th, I'm sorry. If you have a family and you really can, you want to know what's going on and what resources out there for you, tune in on May 4th, 6:30. Until then, this is Tony Williams, your host, Veterans Council of Veterans, Veteran Suicide, the Local Solution. We want you to do something about saving a veteran's life from suicide. Until then, it's Tony Williams out.